Major arc, minor arc, arc addition postulate, we're at 12.2a. And now we're up to four previous videos for Chapter 12 that are linked in the geometry playlist if you need them. A central angle is an angle whose vertex is the center of a circle. So right here, this blue part is the central angle. And right here is its vertex. It's the center of the circle. An arc is an unbroken part of a circle consisting of two points called the endpoints. You can see my green dots here. Can you see them? Right here and right here. And all the points on the circle between them. So that red area is an arc. The brown area is also an arc. It's just a much bigger one. We'll talk about that. A minor arc is an arc that measures less than 180 degrees or is less than a half circle, semicircle. It's in the central angle. A major arc is an arc that is greater than a semicircle or an arc that has a measure greater than 180 degrees. It's outside the central angle. So for your notes, for arcs and their measures, a minor arc is an arc whose points are on or in the interior of a central angle. And the measure of a minor arc is equal to the measure of its central angle. So the measure of arc AC right here is equal to the measure of angle ABC, which is equal to x degrees. And minor arcs may be named by two points like this. And see, we have the arc on top of it so that we know it's arc AC. A major arc is an arc whose points are on or in the exterior of a central angle. And the measure of a major arc is equal to 360 degrees minus the measure of its central angle. So the measure of arc ADC, so that would be ADC, is equal to 360 degrees minus the measure of angle ABC. So it's 360 degrees minus x degrees, whatever the central angle is. Major arcs and semicircles must be named by three points. If the endpoints of an arc lie on a diameter, the arc is a semicircle. And the measure of a semicircle is 180 degrees, so the me measure of arc EFG, this orange arc, is equal to 180 degrees. Now take a look at this circle graph. It shows the surface area of the seven continents, and it's color-coordinated. We can see Asia is 33%, North America is 18%, South America is 13%, Africa 11%, Antarctica is 11%, Europe is 8%, and Australia is 6%. We need to find the measure of arc CD. And you can see the points A, B, C, D, E, F, G going around. So we need to find this arc right here, CD, where South America is 13%. The measure of arc CD is equal to the measure of that central angle the measure of angle CHD. The measure of angle CHD is equal to 13 hundredths, 0.13, times 360 degrees of a circle. It gives us 46.8 degrees. The central angle is 13% of the circle, so it's 13% of 360 degrees. Adjacent arcs are arcs of the same circle, like right here, that intersect at exactly one point. Arc AB and arc BC are adjacent arcs. They intersect at B. That brings us to more notes for the arc addition postulate. The measure of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measures of the two arcs. So we would just add this arc and this arc. The measure of arc ABC is equal to the measure of arc AB plus the measure of arc BC.
We can use the arc addition postulate to find the measure of arc CDE. We have CDE. And the measure of arc CD, we can see, is 90 degrees. And the measure of DFE, DFE, is equal to 18 degrees because of the vertical angles theorem. If BFA here is 18 degrees, then DFE must be 18 degrees. And the measure of arc CE is equal to the measure of arc CD plus the measure of arc DE. That's the arc addition postulate. We do the 90 degrees plus the 18 degrees. We know that arc CDE is 108 degrees. We substitute the values and add. Doesn't that kind of remind you of the segment addition postulate? Two segments added together. Now we have two arcs added together. So this is a little extra. It's a little bonus information. We've been talking about central angles and their measures. The length of an arc can be found with, so if we're looking for length x, it would equal 2 pi r times the measure of the central angle divided by 360 degrees. So it'd be 2 pi r multiplied by the quotient of the measure of the central angle and 360 degrees. If we know the radius is 10, we substitute that in. If we know the central angle is 36 degrees, we substitute that in. 36 divided by 360 is 1 tenth, and we get 20 pi times 1 tenth, which gives us 2 pi. So we know the length of this arc, x, is 2 pi. We just multiply 20 times the 1 tenth. See? So continuing on with our bonus information, the length of an arc can also be found by using a proportion. If we know the radius is 10 and the central angle is 36 degrees, we can find this length, x, by putting the length of the arc divided by the circumference equal to the degree measure of the arc, that central angle, divided by 360 degrees. We would have x divided by 2 pi 10, because that's the circumference, right? 2 pi r, we know the radius is 10. It's going to be equal to the quotient of 36 and 360, which is 1 tenth. 2 times 10, that would give us 20 pi. Now we can just use cross products. We would get 10x is equal to 20 pi. And we just solve for x. We divide both sides by the 10. We get 1x is equal to 2 pi, the same as before. So our next video is going to be the second part of this lesson. We're going to talk about congruent angles, arcs, and chords. And we have two theorems in 12.2b. Then we're going to go move on to sector area and arc length in 12.3. So I hope you took good notes, and now you know about arcs and their measures. And for this right here, for the length of an arc, we could find the area of the black part of the circle, that major arc, by finding the length of the minor arc and just subtracting it from the circumference of the circle, couldn't we? I hope you're doing well and have a great day, and I'll see you for the second part of the lesson. Bye.